Hi guys, it's Carol. Welcome or welcome back to Pattern Encyclopedia where we talk about all things knitting and sometimes crochet. So if you've been following along, you know that I went through a knit scrunchie obsession. And today I'm really excited because I'm gonna be doing a step-by-step -step tutorial on my knit scrunchie pattern. This scrunchie is knit flat and it is super easy. I think this was like the second thing I ever made so if you're a beginner, you can definitely do this. I designed this pattern because when I was initially looking for a knit scrunchie tutorial on YouTube and just searching different patterns, I couldn't find any that I really liked. A lot of the patterns had sort of a thicker yarn and so the scrunchie was like huge. And I just wanted a nice, very average sized scrunchie. So I made it up, I went to the craft store, I bought some fingering weight yarn and just kind of experimented until I figured out exactly what I liked and then I wrote up a pattern for it. So my pattern can be found on Etsy if you feel like supporting me that way but the purpose of this video is so that you don't have to purchase a pattern. It's really just meant to um, help beginner and expert knitters alike to make their own scrunchies because that is something that is cool and I want to share it with you. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So the first thing you're going to need is some fingering weight yarn. I use the wool-like yarn by Loops and Threads. Next you're going to need either a ruler or a tape measure of some kind. Then you'll need a hair tie of your choice. I prefer this nylon hair tie. I think I bought mine from Target, but they just work really well with the scrunchie. Next you'll need a tapestry needle to weave in your ends. And last but not least, you'll need two US size 5 or 3.75 millimeter straight knitting needles. Okay, so it's time to cast on. You're going to start with a slip knot. And then we're going to cast on 120 stitches with a long tail cast on method. So here I'm demonstrating how I cast on. There are a few different ways to do this and lots of video tutorials that are probably better than this, but this is just the basics if you have never done this before. And you're just gonna continue casting on using that long tail method until you have a total of 120 stitches. So knitting the body is surprisingly the easiest part of making the scrunchie. So you are literally just going to knit all the way across. I also want to take a moment to address gauge for the scrunchie, so I'll list gauge in the description box, but since the scrunchie isn't a clothing item, it's really not essential to obtain it. If you really want to play it safe and try to get gauge, you are more than welcome to do so, but getting gauge won't make or break your scrunchie. Okay, so here I'm reaching the end of my first row. Once you've finished your first row, it should look a little something like this. And you're just going to repeat row one like you just did over and over again. So you're going to go ahead and knit all the way across for each row. And you'll do that until your scrunchie measures about two inches from cast on. Okay, so here you can see my scrunchie measures about two inches, so it's time to go ahead and bind off. So here I'm demonstrating how to bind off. You'll start by knitting two stitches, and then you'll pull that first stitch up over the second stitch and let it drop down and you'll just repeat this over and over again. So knit one, pull that first stitch over, let it drop. 
And for the scrunchie, you do want to make sure that you're binding off a little bit loosely, just so that one end of your scrunchie isn't super cinched and the other is not. So here I'm nearing the end of my bind off. Once you have only one stitch left on your needle, you're going to go ahead and measure out for your tail. So this tail you're going to want at least 48 inches because we're going to be using it to connect the fabric we just made to our hair tie. So once you've measured out at least 48 inches, go ahead and give it a snip. And then you're going to go ahead and wrap around your needle, pull that last stitch up and over, and then you'll go ahead and pull that tail all the way through. Secure it with a tug and that is it for the knitting portion. It's a little bit of a <laughs> wobbly weird thing. But give it a second, we're gonna make it look like a scrunchie. So the first step in attaching to the hair tie is going to be to go ahead and thread that tail we just cut through your needle. And next, we're going to wrap our hair tie like a little taco. So to do this, you're going to kind of center your hair tie in the middle of your fabric, and then you'll literally wrap it like a taco. So you're gonna fold it around, and then I'm kind of pushing the edges to the outside of the hair tie, just because I think that's a bit easier to work with. So here I'm just showing you what it looks like and kind of giving you a close-up. Just keep that taco mentality in mind. And now for the fun part. I say that with a hint of sarcasm, um, but we are going to sort of start sewing our scrunchie together. So you're going to want to go stitch by stitch as best as you can. So you'll do one stitch on one side and then you'll go through the corresponding stitch on the other side. Pull that all the way through, and then you'll do it back to front. So the same thing, but through the back side, one stitch and two stitch, and pull it through. And you're just going to repeat this until you reach the end of the length of your scrunchie. So here I just wanted to demonstrate what your scrunchie will look like after a little while. So it'll start actually bunching up like a scrunchie classically does. You'll reach a point where it seems like the fabric doesn't fit, but just keep scrunching it for lack of better words, because that is what is going to give it the scrunchie effect. So once you reach the end of the length of your scrunchie, this is what it'll look like. It'll sort of have this gap, but otherwise it should be fully sewn together. So to close that gap, you're going to smush both sides together like so. And you're just going to continue using that same simple sewing technique that we used for the rest of the scrunchie. So again, kind of doing your best to go stitch by stitch through both of those stitches on either side, pulling all the way through, and you'll continue this all the way around. So it is a bit strange because you're kind of going in a circle, but still the same concept. Okay, so once you've gone all the way around, your scrunchie will look something like this. And now all that's left is to weave in our ends. So I like to start off by going kind of across the seam that we just made, just kind of back and forth. 
There's really no right way to weave in your ends on the knit scrunchie, but I like to just try to make it as secure as possible, and to do that I'll go through quite a few stitches. So once I've gone across the seam for a while, I'll start to go across the actual body of the scrunchie. So I'll just go back and forth, sort of using the same technique. I'll weave up in one direction, and then I'll return in kind of a diagonal parallel to the line that I just made. And again, there's no right way to do this, just whatever feels secure to you. And there you have it, you made yourself your very own scrunchie. Definitely leave a comment with how your scrunchie turns out if you do decide to try this. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to hear about how your knit scrunchies turn out. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe if you're interested in seeing more videos like this in the future. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.